Hello everyone. So at the end of our last video, we were going over the debug log and we found that the debug um, showed our flow working successfully to find a primary contact for the case in question, uh, the case that we just created. So the next step in this process will be to have the flow do something with this ID that it's found. And if you had to guess by looking at the elements in the toolbox here, which data element uh, might we want to use to make an update <laughs> in Salesforce um, based on the ID that we found. And hopefully you said update and that's the right answer. And so again, this is a reason I kind of like um, the freeform layout when you're first getting started, just so you can think in a checklist like manner and just go through each of these elements and be like, which one do I need? Um, it, it does make it helpful when you know, you're thinking about how to build the flow. So we've gotten our primary contact. We will now drag an update records to the canvas and if you'll recall from what we did in the UI, um, all that Sherry's team is really looking for is that we take that ID of the contact and we just stamp it on the case. And, and what I mean by that is there's that contact field on the case. And so if we put in the ID of the contact into that case field, um, it will be present on the case. And so that's what we're going to build here. And so I'll just, you know, I drag the update records over. I'll call this update case. And you can see that um, we have different options here, but um, the use the case record that triggered this flow is automatically selected. And that's because we're doing a before save flow. So if you needed to use, um, you know, update different records in the database, um, let's say instead of updating this case, you wanted to update, you know, the account or something, it, it might be better to use that after save flow. And that's what this message is saying right here in the middle. Um, filter conditions. So this would, you know, if we wanted to filter out certain um, cases that are being created, uh, we could add those here. I don't think we really have any. Um, I think that the um, case being created is really the, the only condition. Like every time a case is created, we just want to stamp it on there. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just click the field values here for the case, and we're going to pick the contact ID. And so that corresponds with that contact name field, which I will highlight here. So even though it's called contact name on the front end, uh, on the back end, this contact name field is actually called contact ID. And similarly, uh, the account name field is called account ID. So fun fact about cases. So now that we have our contact uh, field selected here in the flow, I will just um, pick the value. And so if you recall, uh, whenever we use a get records, that uh, get element creates a, sing a record single variable for us to use. So I can just click that, um, and this is our get primary contact. And because we chose to automatically store all the fields, every single one of the contact fields is available here. And I just need the ID field. So the, the ID of that contact itself can be uh, stamped on into the contact ID field. So we'll press done. And then we'll connect. If you're using Freeform, you'll connect your get records to your update. If you're using the auto layout, they're probably connected automatically. And now I'm just going to press save. And just as we did um, the first time around, we can run, um, you know, debugs. We can debug the flow early and often. And I like to just do that basically every step along the way. Um, it makes it really easy to see where things are breaking or, or kind of what's going on. So I'm just going to skip the start condition requirements. I don't always check this box. The reason we're checking this box in this flow is because we've configured our flow to run when a case is created. In this case, already exists in the system. And so that's OK in situations like this where we don't actually need to create a new case. We can just pretend uh, that an existing case is being created for the sake of the flow. So I'll press run. And we see uh, that it was completed and that our flow you know, highlighted the path that it ran. And over on the right-hand side, we can see that the flow started through um, the flow debugger and that the start condition requirements were skipped. Um, obviously, they were skipped because we checked that box. If this were an actual uh, debug log that got sent to your email, you would probably see some extra info here. Um, but our get records worked just as before. We covered that in the last video. And the new element here is the update records, so updating this case. And we can see that 
uh, the configuration settings for that update records appear here in the debug log. So again, another, um, I guess, benefit to using the, the debug log is that you can learn a lot about how the flow is structured. So we see that we're going to update the case record that triggered the flow and that we don't have any filter conditions. We're always updating the record and that we are going to set the contact ID equal to the get primary contact ID. And our flow actually ran through and, and evaluated and it found the, um, the actual contact ID. And so we could actually, if we wanted to, we could compare this ID here by highlighting it um, and just looking to make sure that this matches this highlighted contact ID. And so we see that this ID here ends in 2QCTIA2. And looking back here, uh, 2QCTIA2. And so that um, or we know that this contact that was found by the flow is indeed Andy Young, and that we could stamp Andy Young's uh, ID into the case. And so it actually does that, and then it says this case record is ready to be updated when the interview finishes. Now, because we're running a debug, um, I guess a, a test, um, so to speak, the flow rolls all those changes back so the case doesn't actually get updated. But um, if this were you know, a real uh, case being created, then it would have uh, saved that into, it would have saved that contact ID into the case field. So great, uh, we have our get records and our update records. And that's, that's the core functionality that Sherry needed. So it would appear as though our flow is done um, in the sense that we have the core functionality there, but we, we still have to test some of the edge cases. And so when you're testing flows, it's really important that you test uh, positive cases. And so this is a positive case. And what that means is that we do have a primary contact or we do have a contact. We do have a primary contact because his account role is there and we do have a case, uh, but we also need to test negative cases. And so that would be, what if we have a contact or what if there are two contacts on the account or three or four, but none of them are the primary contact? Um, does our flow still work then? And what I mean by that is twofold. One, does the end user get any errors? Like if I change this account role to none, does our flow error out when it tries to create um, or tries to stamp uh, the value into the case field? We can find out in a second. Uh, so that's the first thing is if there is no um, contact here that's listed as the primary, does the flow fail? And then the second thing is what if there's no contacts at all? So if there's if there's zero contacts, uh, what do we do? And that's called the null case. So we have our positive, our negative, and our null. And then there's a final testing scenario called the bulk, which would be if we had, I guess it doesn't apply here. Well, it does. If, if we created like 100 cases at once, would this flow be able to run 100 times without throwing errors. And so we're just gonna focus on this first case here of what happens to the flow when there is no primary contact listed. So if you'll recall on the Dickinson PLC account, we only have one contact. Previously, he was listed as the primary. I just changed that. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna debug our flow again and see if it still works. We'll skip the start condition requirements and we'll do this and press run and we see that it still runs and in this event um, our get records failed to find any records so no problem and our update records uh, just was it attempted to enter a null value into the contact ID so um, in this case it worked but um, maybe that's something we would want to check with Sherry on is like hey Sherry uh, if, if we don't find the primary contact do we just do no update or do you want us to get uh, whatever contact we did find and stamp that on there? And uh, that's something that we'll discuss more in the next video.